We are taters. That's Sophia Booger, Mom. And Lily! <laughs> I love it. <laughs> hey, y'all. Welcome to our channel. We are the Southern Fried Maple Leaves. I'm Brittany. That's Corey. And, you know, usually... Usually we do... <laughs> Usually we do, <laughs> usually we do like family vlogs and stuff on this channel. If you've been following us, you know that. Today we're going to do something a little different and we're going to do a woodworking video. So some of you may know we have a small woodworking business called the Southern Maple. That is our name on Facebook if you want to go follow us over there. But just recently, Corey has taught me how to use the CNC machine. And so I've been making lots of fun signs and art for your walls. And today I wanted to show you guys exactly how to do that. So we're gonna go from start to finish, how to CNC, it's actually not wood, it's MDF board, but how to CNC your own sign and paint it, finish it, get it ready to sell. Here we go, you rascals. All right. Boom, okay, to get started, we can pick which method we're gonna do. We're either gonna use a piece of MDF that's already painted, or we're gonna use a raw piece of MDF. It just depends on how we wanna finish it. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a raw piece. I'm going to paint it. Um, I usually put two coats on. This one has one. So I'm about to put one more coat on this and on to the next step. You want to make sure that all of your stroke lines are all the way up and all the way down. You don't want any that are like that. Like that one? Shh. Smooth it out real good. And then follow me. Lay it out with sun to dry. <laughs> Is that what the pros do? <laughs> On the drying rack, There's aka my work truck. <laughs> There's some other ones. My finger is bleeding here. Now, while my paint's drying, I'm gonna show you guys how to enter everything in the system for the CNC machine through V-Carve. And in the meantime, Corey is going to make me some frames for some of the pictures that I've already done. <laughs> okay, y'all, so one of the first things that I do is I sit down on the computer and I find an image that I like. Whatever I wanna make a sign of, if I want it to be a quote, if I want it to be, you know, an animal, a picture, whatever I wanna do that day, I sit down, I find an image of it on Google, that is black and white and that looks like it's gonna fit into my program. Um, so I'll take my image and I'll put it in V-Carve. Let me show you how. Okay, so I go online, I find something cool that I like, like this elephant here, and I save it to my computer. Once it's saved, I'll open up V-Carve and I'll get me a fresh sheet here. Um, and we'll have a new project to start working on. So um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the dimensions of the board that I'm going to put it on. So this one, this board's 24 by 24. So I'm going to type in 23 by 23 just to give myself a little room around the edges. Um, now I've got my blank canvas here. I'm going to back out and I'm going to go up here to find my downloaded picture that I just found on the internet. Scroll down. Here it is my elephant. All right. Now I'm going to get it to the size that I want it. Um, for this, I do want to put roll tide on the top. So I'm going to leave a little room up top. But first thing that I'll do is I will go into my dustpan. And when I open that, up, I'm going to be able to tweak it a little bit to make sure that all of the lines are as thick as I want them. And then I'll delete the original picture. So this is what I'm left with my little elephant. Um, now that I've done that, I'm going to go in and put some text on the top. Like I said, I want it to say Roll Tide, just because Alabama is the best football team in the whole world. So we're going to go ahead and put Roll Tide here in the text box and then apply it. It's going to show up on my picture and then I'm going to put it the size that I want it on top of my elephant. Right like that. Looks good. All right now I want to select all of my vectors. So I want to select everything I have and I want to come over here and do a tool path for it. So I will calculate on the tool path um, what it's going to look like by entering in how deep I want it to carve it out. And this one I wanted to carve it at 0 0.075. So I just want it to skim the surface. Um, then I can view the tool path. I can zoom in and see if it's going to do like I want it to do. And if it is like this one, I'm pretty sure will. I'm going to go ahead and save it. 
Meanwhile, in the garage, Corey has been working hard trying to get me some frames built. Actually, we just had some, you know, cheapy wood in the garage. That'll do. I'm going for the farmhouse look. Of course, we got to set up the little cameras, get some little angles going so you can see. This is the scariest part right here is the table saw. I hate working on the table saw, so I'm glad he was able to do that for me and cut up some pieces that are gonna be the right size for my pictures. Now I'm gonna come in here and finish it off. I'm going to take my picture and measure it just using my picture instead of a tape measure. And then I'm gonna cut it to size. The main thing to remember here when you're cutting your frame is just to make sure that you measure it properly. Um, and then, you know, there's several different kinds of frames that you can build. Uh, this is just one way that we do it. Uh, we just staple it on there, you know. Another way is to cut grooves into it. We usually do that on the bigger pictures. Um, but you can also just put these little frames, these little boards uh, directly on your MDF board and nail them on straight onto the MDF. Uh, you definitely want to sand the edges and just give it that nice clean finished look. And once you have your frame on, you go in and you can stain it. Honestly, I wish that I had stained it before I stapled it together, but this is the finished look. And I am very happy with my finished product. Now, my paint has dried from my original project, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my CNC machine. I wanna make sure that it's tied down real tight so it doesn't go anywhere, it doesn't budge when my CNC is working on it. I'm gonna plug my computer in, turn the machine on, and get this thing going. It's probably gonna take a couple hours, so I'm gonna open my CNC shark, and then I'm gonna press load G-code, and I'm gonna go and find the design that I just made up in the v-carve which is the elephant i'm going to let that load and there it is the first thing that you want to do when you have your board on is go ahead and line it up so this is a 24 by 24 inch board so i want to find the middle i'm going to find 12 and mark it and 12 and mark it as you can see i've already got my router bit right above the 12 and 12 so right right center is where we want to start then come over here and you want to get it where it's actually touching. So you're gonna press the Z and you gotta get your eyeball right up on it and make sure that it touches the board. Now that we've got it where we want it, we're gonna exit X, Y, Z it out. So you press this button here, X, Y, Z, you want everything to be zero. And then you press run file. All right, once it's done, loading i'll say press okay to begin all right since the cnc machine is going to take four hours <laughs> we're going to go ahead and catch some z's and then we're going to finish this all up tomorrow bye bye, bye. All right, so it's the next day. This thing took four hours to complete. It got done late last night, and then today it finished up. Bam! There it is. Now we decided since this one looks so good. Wow! Really... <laughs> wow, is right. So we decided that we really liked this one on the way that it was with the light color wood in the background. So we're actually not even going to stain this one. And we like this one so much that we decided to make another one today. With a different design that I already had. <laughs> We're getting video gold here. Ew! <laughs> Can you be mad at that? Okay, so we decided to do another one since we liked that first one so much. And this is the one I think I'm actually going to keep this one and sell the other one. But yeah, so we decided that we're just going to keep these like this because we love it so much. But we're going to show you how to stain the inside of a painted board. We're just going to do it on a different side. So let's make a new one. Hey, mother. When we got more signs, it means I got to make more goddamn friends. <laughs> and cut. <laughs> Can we try again? Family channel and action. When you have more signs, gotta make more frames. <laughs> Do it regular. Like me. Oh, come on. More signs is more frames. Booch. Take 20 action. Guess I'm stuck making a lot more frames for all these damn signs. <laughs> that was way closer. Now do it one more time. Come on. <laughs> Ready, set, go. So. 
here we have <laughs> more signs. Let's say is X. <laughs> Pay attention, class. More frames. We'll say is Y. More signs equals more frames. X equals Y. That's today's lesson. <laughs> now, while he's doing that, I'm going to carry on making my signs. I've got this one loaded in the V carb, and now it is complete. Beautiful. Okay, so it's time to try to stain the letters. So what we're gonna do is I picked out the stain that I want for this one. I'm gonna use dark walnut. And I went ahead and got my mineral spirits ready and my rag ready. So as soon as I put the stain against the letters, I can immediately wipe off all the excess around the letters with the mineral spirits. Here we go. I'm gonna wipe all of it off. Okay. All right, there we go. Now you got the stained letters with the white finished farmhouse look. Now that our sign is complete, I wanna work on my frame for this one. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stain it first this time. You know, last time we attached the frame and then stained it, and it was just too much of a pain in the butt trying to clean it up afterwards. So now I'm gonna stain it first, put the stain on, and then you immediately wipe it off. And this is gonna go perfect with the color that I did for the letters. So get these nice and cleaned up, ready to go, let them dry, and then I will attach them. Now, once I've attached my frame, the only thing left to do is to attach a little hanger for it and then hang it up, take some pictures, and it's ready to sell. To make the frame, I just took some basic two by 10 building grade lumber, pine, or sorry, southern yellow uh, pine that we had. Put a, a groove in here quarter inch wide to accept the quarter inch thick panels. And just matched it all up. Um, put some wood glue and some brad nails on the side. And, and that's how, uh, this is the finished product here. So here's one that we're still working on. You can see, it just slides right off. You take that, that groove, fit it on. Make sure the corners are nice and flush. Pop, pop, tack it in place. She's good to go. Kapow. Thanks, babe. I am so thankful Corey made me a little shelf for all my signs. As you can see, we've done. Tons of really cool ones so far. I've got tons more to do. Well, tell everybody where they can find us. Uh, you can find us on Instagram, Southern Maple Woodworks, or on Facebook, Southern Maple. If you're interested in having something custom made, just uh, DM us, we'll gladly get back to you. All right, guys, that's it. That's how we make our fun little signs at home. Um, hopefully this video hasn't been too confusing, but I did want to show you how we did it from start to finish. Um, you know, there's several different ways to go about making little signs like this, and this is the method that we use most of the time. We switch it up. Um, I know a lot of you probably don't have a CNC machine at home, but you can also make these signs using stencils. Um, I do recommend getting like a stencil printer though. Um, you know, CNC's are pretty expensive, but one of those printers for stencils, it's really not, it's not too bad for what you can make off of the signs. Um, you know, as a stay-at-home mom, I really wanted to do something to still bring in some income for our family. And this has just been the coolest way to do it. Uh, we really do have a lot of fun out here in the garage. And I've had a lot of fun making these signs just in this last week. All these fun little designs. Custom orders are so much fun too because you never know what you're going to get. Um, you know, if any of you would like a custom sign made, um, I'm not sure what shipping would be or where you are in the world. But if you're local, that'd be great. We're happy to make stuff. Uh, for any of you. So if you are interested in getting a sign that you see that I've already made, or if you are interested in getting a custom piece done, please just let us know. Uh, shoot us a message on Instagram or Facebook and we will get back to you like immediately. But yeah, that's it guys. That's how we do our little signs. Thank you so much for watching. Please support our channel and 
hit the subscribe button. Give us a like, a comment. We'll see you guys on the next vlog. Take care. Peace.